Hello guys, recently one of my tweets kind of blew up in popularity with almost 400 likes and we will talk about that in this video. I want to expand and talk about after function in migrations. And let's discuss it kind of step by step from simple to more complex examples. Imagine you have already a user's table or any other table and you want to add a new field but not at the end of the table but after some other column in the database so it would be easier for you to view the data in your SQL client. This is the syntax, so nullable after what Whatever column you want. For example, if you don't do that, let's run PHP Artisan Migrate, we add the field, and if we refresh the database table, we refresh and we have phone at the end. Now if we drop that column with migrate rollback, which is here drop column and then add after password, migrate again and refresh the table and that phone field is here after the password which makes it easier to read the data in SQL client like I'm using table plus here or whatever client you prefer. Important note, this after, even in the documentation, it says that it's a MySQL feature. It doesn't work in PostgreSQL, it doesn't work in SQLite, it's just MySQL. Now let's get a bit more complex. We roll back again, and what if you want to add a few columns in one migration and also after password? So one of the options is, for example, phone, GitHub, and then you add after password here. That would be incorrect because then it would be GitHub after password and then phone after password. If we execute that, then we refresh and it will be GitHub phone. But in migrations, we want phone and then GitHub. If we drop both columns with rollback, the correct would be this after password and then GitHub after phone like this. So we execute that, we refresh the table and now we have phone github. Good. Now what if you want to add a third field then for example twitter username like this then you go after github like this. But this is where it gets pretty hard to read and quickly grasp which field comes after which. And also I feel the increased chance of any typos here. So the solution here which I actually tweeted in my popular tweet you can group table after after that password field and have a callback function, which also accepts the same blueprint table as a parameter. And then inside you do whatever, like table, string, phone, GitHub, Twitter, and you don't need to provide any after in this case. You just provide three columns and those will be automatically created one by one in that exact order. So now if we roll back and delete those two columns, refresh, we don't have them and now we execute migration with after grouped, refresh, and we have those three columns. The final note in this video, some people noted that there's a performance cost. So Mateusz and Peter here is talking about problems on large table because you're injecting new columns in the middle of the new row. But actually in my experiments here on local project in MySQL, I didn't feel any performance cost, to be honest. Probably that would be on very large tables with a lot of data, but in the default users table of Laravel, I deliberately seated around a million rows of users and three columns are added, as you can see, almost instantly. 17 milliseconds, 37, 36, and it's the same time if I don't do after. For example, let's drop those three again. So Twitter and then remove the after, comment that out. So add those three columns at the end and let's see the time difference. Roll back, migrate again. 22 milliseconds. It's even a bit slower than with after. So you probably should be in theory cautious about performance cost, but in my experiments, I couldn't confirm that in practice. If you do have any proof or benchmark that it is slow, please share in the comments below. So yeah, kind of a quick Laravel tip, but with a little bit of story around it with backstory and step-by-step, -step, I like these videos kind of making a bit deeper dive, explaining how things work with a bit of context. I hope you like watching these videos as much as I like creating them. And if you want to support my work of creating free videos on YouTube, check out premium courses and premium tutorials on laraveldaily.com. There are more than 50 courses at the moment about various topics in Laravel ecosystem. The link to that page will be in the description below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.